<laughs> no, we love cats. The other one's sleeping. <laughs> nice. Good to see you, Joanne. It's good to see you. How's things been? It's been all right. Yeah. Starting to realize what I want to do. That's good. And following that. It's nice when you finally start traversing that path rather than just kind of wandering around going, where's next? What to do? Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. I feel I feel at peace with that. Because it was it was like a it was like a ooh, ooh, I'm like, I, I need I need something stable here. <laughs> Don't we all these days? Good morning, Lisa. You can see the comments, yeah? Um, Great comments at the oh, up. yeah. There it is. Hello, everybody. Hello. Good morning. Hello, hello. Welcome. Hi, Lynn. Happy Saturday to you guys. How's it going? Hello, Patrick. Hi, Jordan. Hi, Anna. Hi, Jessica. Welcome, welcome. How is everyone today? What's going on with these solar flares, by the way? I heard there's another big one. I'm going to check that really quick before I forget. Oh, I wonder if that's why I've had, like, a lot of, like, sinus pressure issues. We've had, a, wow. Yeah, take a look at that. <gasps> <laughs> that okay. might have something to do with it. And then let's see the solar. Yep, we had some big spikes. Let's see. Wow. Holy shit. Oh, my God, you guys. Damn, look at that. Right up here to the right, too, like this side here. This is the one that just happened. Look at that. Look at those spikes. That's going almost all the way up to the next class. And then look at that. <laughs> so if you're feeling weird today, if you're feeling a little funny, that might be why. Let's check the Schumann as well. These That's a huge flare, you guys. Holy shit. No wonder I couldn't sleep till like 3 o'clock in the morning. No, I went to bed at 4. That's right. It was 4 o'clock in the morning. I could not sleep to save my life last night. Which is funny. What we're going to talk about today. About sleep a little bit. Good morning. Good morning, everyone that's coming in. How have you guys been feeling with these flares, huh? Oh, sinus pressure. Someone else got sinus pressure. It knocked me out yesterday. And it had, like, um, I had to go to the doctors. My whole, like, I don't know if you can see it. I'm still flared up. Red. I did um, have some of that last night too. Yep. It's been it's been wild. Interesting. It is called they're asking about the app. It's called Magnetic Storms. So if you click on it, that's what you see. It's, <laughs> it doesn't last very long. But yeah, it's called Magnetic Storms. And you can have a look. Like they're showing like the geomagnetic index and a few other things that are just going up through the roof today. So I'm not surprised people are having difficulty sleeping and having sinus issues and that sort of thing. Because it is quite a problem these days, you know. These flares are, are making us do this. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see what happens when things start getting bigger and bigger. I wonder if these are like actually upgrades we're getting because I was um, streaming and did some mediumship readings last night and they were very, very clear and easy. Way, way just well, going. The mail is very thin right now. Like crazy thin. I felt like, you remember that movie from back in the day, Ghost, where Whoopi Goldberg and they're all like scrounged <laughs> around. That's what I felt like. I'm like, this is new. This is, this is, this is wild. <laughs> Yeah, it's only going to get more and more wild. I think that the uh, the more thin the veil gets, the easier it is to pick up on these things. And also, I think when it comes to dreams, I do feel that we're remembering our dreams more. Anybody else notice this, that, that dreams are starting to get easier to remember, that our, our night travels? Because uh, one of the things that I've been studying quite a lot is... Um, for many years, as you guys know, is the astral realms, but... The dreams have a lot of messages in themselves. So a lot of people know that uh, when you astral project, you're leaving your body and you're actually going on and traveling. But you do this every night when you dream anyway. It's just that you don't remember that you're not completely conscious for those dreams. So it's more of a, a message that you get from your subconscious when you have a dream. And uh, there's quite a lot of different uh, studies and research that have been done on dreaming. 
Um, Carl Jung did a lot of research into it. In fact, he did like a, a list of nine. What was it? I had it list here. Where was it? Of course, my brain isn't working because I was up till four o'clock in the morning. Um, yes, the, he had the nine rules of dream interpretation. And um, and some of those those rules are a bit old school. Hey, Jordan. Say. Hey. So, um, yeah, I really do think that uh, a lot of our messages that we get are actually, you know, um, visits, too, from loved ones. And that's something that you found, and you're turning into video messages now, too, yeah? You're having uh, mediumship messages. Oh, yes. So, um, I just, I um, was messing around um, back in 2020 end of 2022 i just said because i used to be a dj i don't know if you um, knew that i used to be a dj and i love music i'm a very very musical soul and um there's some couple apps and stuff you can use and you can chop up music and everything so i would hear like when i channel i channel music and usually it loops on a part of a song Mm. so when it loops on the part of a song i'll take it and i'll chop up that song and then usually do another two songs and i'll loop all those all together into one one song and i'll put it in a video and then as the video plays you'll see a message i'll be still channeling it's a lot of channeling but yes that's what i've designed nice love that i uh I think a lot of people are looking for messages from their loved ones and we a lot of times like what comes on the radio will be a message from a loved one because they'll be trying to uh to get through one way or another um i love it when sometimes i i ask siri i'll be like just play me a song and then the song that just happens to come on is is like perfect for my situation or my day or just my mood for that moment and it gets me all excited so uh <clears throat> Just so, since there's more people on now, we can start going back a little bit as to how you and I met many, many years ago. We met back in Syracuse. We've known yep. each other at least, what, 25 years probably? Give or yeah, take. it was like 2000, I think. Yeah, yeah, give or take. So yeah, it's been uh, it's been a long time we've been friends. And you've been helping me quite a bit on, on um, the Soul Apprentice Facebook page. So I just want to thank you for that. You're it's welcome. not easy to run a Facebook page and to post memes and ban spammers all the time and deal with all the people that fight in the comments. So thank you very much for your help with that. Um, so you and I have also been, we've been talking about dream interpretation for quite a while too. Um, so what got you into that? If you don't mind me asking. So um, I'm, I'm a shaman and um, we work with the, what's called mother Jaguar and the winds of the West. Um, and what she does is, um, she tracks back like a situation you're having or a problem you're having. We'll, we'll sit with it and we'll track back to, okay, where did it start from? Did it start from childhood? Did it start from, you know, when you were a baby, you know, it, we, we track it back then, you know, push it to the, the, you know, current timeline. So I've thought of doing a shamanic twist on dream interpretation. So, you know, you have that message, but what if that message, you could actually track back to what the root of it's trying to tell you. So I've been, I've been, I created that, the yeah. shamanic dream interpretation. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, animal messages that come through that way. Yeah. When you, when you see an animal in your dreams. There can be, there can be. Um, Usually it's um, a wound that we're tracking back to that happened with, you know, limiting um, programs and beliefs from childhood. But um, what I've been able to do is when somebody tells me their dream, I can track back to, okay, what happened with this? And then what happened? Let's go back a little bit longer. What happened with this? We can really track back to the root cause. Yeah. A lot of it is also our, um, our desires our hidden fears, all of those things that are trapped in our subconscious that we aren't really addressing, it tends to come out in those dreams. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's one of your favorite dreams that you, that you would often interpret for people? 
Um, I usually am able to do the ones, I like the ones where they're telling me about a dream and um, it usually goes back to like a wound from childhood that they didn't realize that they were aware of. Like, for example, um, maybe, you know, you had the perspective growing up that your parents ignored you or didn't pay attention to, or you had siblings that they paid more attention to. So, you know, I'm able to see that in a dream when we're talking about the dream, we could track back I'm like, Hey, do you think maybe this could have happened? So they grew up with that program, you know, that um, abandonment wound and that um, rejection wound. That is a big one. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think a lot of the messages that come forward too are about healing because you visit that older version, that younger version, I should say, of yourself in when yes. you're sleeping. Absolutely. So it helps you to remember some of your childhood traumas as well. So I guess a lot of those night visits are our way of healing ourselves to a degree. I want to um, answer that question. I really love that question that I put. What about reoccurring dreams? I love that question. So those usually tell me what, you know, those are kind of like, I love those ones because you can go back and if, if someone's having the constant dream, it usually go, that's definite a sign of a wound, a, pa a childhood wound, and I'm able to track back. So yes, um, recurring dreams are very, very likely, you know, something you're still holding on to from childhood. And from other lives too. Hunter just said they can be past life memories. That's very true, Hunter. That That is very true too. We visit other versions of ourselves and other parallel realities. So you may actually have a dream that you uh, are a different person, but there's a lot of people that have dreams where they were visiting another version of themselves where, you know, they're living on a different life that they might have learned had lived had they done a different decision, made a different choice in life. So that's also another interesting way that we kind of answer questions about ourselves because a lot of times we want to know why we made a certain decision or why we feel a certain way. So we will end up visiting others, <laughs> other situations or lives or whatever it is that we need to do in order to get that answer. So um, sometimes when we dream of a parallel life, and I, I'm, I'm sure, I don't know if you covered this, I'm sure you probably covered this many mm -hmm. times that sometimes you could break in some past, some past life stuff into this life, right? So I'm yeah. able to track back and see, okay, this happened in this past life, because I do do past lives. Um, I could track back and see, well, you brought this in this life, and this is why it's why you keep, you know, dreaming about it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Lynn says, I dream a lot about being in school and can't find my classroom. A lot of school dreams out there. Yeah, visiting childhood, because a lot of stuff that happened to us uh, at school is still kind of an underlying factor today. So we kind of tune into those energies, I think, in those situations to continue learning from them, probably. Uh, let's see. I'm just reading through some of the comments. I dream of being in the same house I lived in. Maybe you miss that house, so you're visiting it. Or maybe it's possible that they're visiting it because there's something that some sort of traumatic experience happened and they're, it's just replaying over and over and over. Or it could just be that they loved it so much and they miss it because a lot of people with dementia as well, it's like they put themselves into like a living dream where they, they don't realize that the world has moved on and they're still in their minds anyway. They're still living in that old version of themselves by kind of, you know, putting themselves into that state. I've seen that with residual hauntings, like where there's ghosts there and they're just repeating it. Like they don't realize they're dead. They just love that spot. They just, and I'm like, just leave them. They're not hurting anything. Just leave them. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Nicole says, I have tons of dreams where I'm walking around naked. Naked dreams are, aren't those like common dreams about fear? Um, like a pu public ridicule, fear of public ridicule and feeling like, I think imposter syndrome is one of the things for that because I had imposter syndrome for a long time and that was one of the dreams <laughs> that I had. What you about know? being uncomfortable in your skin? Like I would more ask, like, you know, if you had dreams about being naked, how is that? How do you remember how you were feeling during the dream? Like if you're feeling anxious or something, that's usually an indication of you're uncomfortable in your skin. Yes, that's a good point. Um, can you give us tips for lucid dreaming or for remembering our dreams? 
Well, to make it a little bit easier to understand, so a dream state, every night you leave your body when you're sleeping, you switch your perception from your physical, so your, your, you know, your physical perception to your astral body or your um, mental perception when it comes to being in the astral itself, um, what determines whether or not we're going to remember our experience when we leave the body is whether or not our conscious mind is controlling it or our subconscious mind. Because there are a lot of people who uh, just automatically fall asleep and they're out and then they wake up in the morning and they don't remember anything. Those people are letting their subconscious control the entire experience. Um, when your subconscious controls it, you're basically like on autopilot where you're just kind of doing whatever you would normally do while you're, um, while you're awake. A lot of times people can actually see an example of this through sleepwalkers because there's a lot of sleepwalkers that will just kind of putter around the house and mess with stuff and, you know, stand in the corner or whatever it is. That's usually what you do when you're dreaming. It's not really any set um, thing that we do. We just kind of mosey around a bit, you know, until we wake up. But when you're lucid dreaming, when you are having a vivid dream, which is basically the same thing as a lucid dream, that's when you take control of the dream, when you're actually able to um, remember parts of it, that's because you are taking control of it with your conscious mind. It's not your subconscious that's controlling the dream. That's when you realize you're dreaming and you're like, oh, I'm dreaming. I can control this. And that's when you start doing like, you know, um, astral traveling and stuff as well. But astral traveling is different to the point where you, with a vivid dream, you realize that when you're already dreaming with astral projection, that's when you're actually like choosing to go out of body. You're setting the tone for it. You're practicing it. You're, you're trying to get your body to go to sleep while your mind stays awake. And so with, um, what's the last one? Uh, I can't even think of the name, of course. Remote viewing. Remote viewing is similar. It's just that you are doing it through meditation rather than sleep. So there are many ways to remember your dreams more. But I'll, since I've been talking so long, Joanne, I'll let you answer that question. <laughs> well, I always um, tell people when they ask, well, how do I remember a dream? I always say, let go. Because when you attach to the outcome, that's usually, you know, the universe is like, nope, you ain't remembering that. You, it's it's the, the, the power to remember a dream is detaching from the outcome. Yeah. Detaching from the outcome. That's a good one. Uh, What's your thoughts on um, sleep paralysis? Well, it depends. There's two different kinds that I'm aware of. There is the self-induced sleep paralysis and the entity-induced sleep paralysis. Uh, self-induced is when you're practicing astral projection. You're saying things like mind awake, body asleep, mind awake, body asleep. And you keep repeating it over and over again until you are able to kind of project yourself outwards and to leave your body with intention. Um, but an actual, like an entity induced sleep paralysis is when you wake up in the middle of the night, usually from some kind of a nightmare or some kind of a, an awkward dream that makes you feel really not good. And then you wake up and you feel that there's something sitting on you or holding you down. And a lot of times you also feel that you are not alone. You can kind of sense the presence of something in the room or even touching you. And, uh, and that is when they are, you know, when you're dealing with an entity. And if that ever happens, that's when you basically tell it to F off. You, you know what I mean? Like you, you have to be strong and assertive and say, no, get out. You know, like you, you get no food here. No fear. Is it possible these entities, because what we are taught in shamanism, that sometimes, you know, the mind is such a powerful tool. When attachment gets out of control, it turns into an obsession. And then the mind can create what's called an entity, actual like thought creation. Yes. obsession is it possible that those could be in part of sleep paralysis well the funny thing is that that's exactly what all demons are all demons are thought forms um and there's a broad spectrum of what those actually are because thought forms can be anything it's quite literally just something that we've created through belief and thought so for example like you don't see banshees anymore as much as often as you would back in the day they used to be a quite common fear for people to have, especially in Ireland and the UK, um, where you basically have 
some kind of a creature that torments you in your sleep and you can hear and you can quite literally shrieks and that sort of thing. Well, these are still thought forms you can create through your belief and through your power of intention. So a lot of times what people are doing is they're creating their own nightmares. Their demons are basically artificial intelligence that we create through thought, through belief. And so whether or not you are have creating something that is going to self torment you or whether or not it's something that somebody else has created, because a lot of these demons that we deal with are actually kind of like Frankenstein's monster where somebody else creates it. And then it just gets unleashed on the population where it goes around terrorizing people. So that is in many cases, what these thought forms are, whether or not it's one that you created yourself, to, to scare the shit out of yourself because that is quite a, a thing that's a lot of a lot of people do they end up creating their own torment through these things it's kind of like a the opposite of an imaginary friend it's like an imaginary bully that you end up creating for yourself in your own subconscious mind so yeah that is one of the things that we have to decipher when we are doing clearings on people is whether or not it's a self-created thought form or a collective created thought form because the collective created thought forms are quite powerful it's yes. i mean if you think about it because for example a lot of people talk about whether or not satan exists but because so many people believe that he does they have created a thought form that has been gaining a lot of power through belief this whole time yeah Wow. This is one of the reasons why we can't do live clearings, for example. I've been trying to get uh, trying to get it worked out so that we can do live clearings. Like, you guys can actually watch the medium and I work. But then we found, when we asked the soul guides about this, they said, well, for example, like, let's say that there was an attachment named Fred. Okay? And Fred is something that you just created with your mind. And then it ends up as an attachment to you, Right? ends up one of your thought forms. Well, if we are going live to go and clear you and somebody is tuning into you energetically and other people are listening that there is some kind of a demon or monster or whatever it is that you created named Fred, it actually gives Fred power. Every single person that believes in Fred, that is, you know what I mean? It's hearing this story that's hearing your experience is actually giving more power. So they get bigger and bigger and bigger and more powerful in the astral, which is why, I mean, the, the thought form that people have created, Satan as an example, must be extremely powerful at this point because that's how much power humans can give a thought form. That's wild. That's so wild. Um, yeah. I had a um, entity. Um, my my best friend um, had, and she, this is this is a true story, guys. Um, she was like obsessing about quitting vaping, and it was just taking her over to a point where it actually manifested in her home. And I'm like, we got to get rid of that. We got to get rid of that. I'm like, I see it. I see it. I was able to remove it, and and she's fine now. But. And, and speaking of which, I would love, I would absolutely love to help you with clearings because entities are my my specialty. We're taking on new students all the time. What have you found in your experience with them? Um, it's it's the thought. It's it's a lot a lot of times because a lot of a lot of people are like, it's a demon, it's a demon. I'm like, hold on, hold on, let's let's talk about this. I go, I can usually pick up on energy and know it's not a demon because it, it you know their energy is just really chill. But they're like, oh, I got a demon, I got a demon. No. You're, you're, you're good. You're, you're, you're fine. We made our own it's, inner demons. Yeah. It's, it's an ent entity. It's an entity. Right. So, yeah. um, we have tools, like we have like, um, shamans work with a crystal, a Vogel that, um, takes demons out, but I have never had that experience of taking a demon out. And because they're so rare, it's always an entity that I've seen. Well, that's what it, that's what basically is the same thing. Um, but the thing is, when it comes to actual like demons, they are very formidable. It's just an entity that's gained a lot of uh, power. To yeah. It, you know? And I hate to say it, but it just even using the word demon, it makes me cringe sometimes because that's the religious connotations that I've added to it that are, you know, they make everybody sound like that. Like, there is some big monster Satan that's down there controlling all of these things. 
but there isn't because there's nothing outside of ourselves that are actually controlling these things. This is the the result of the collective unconscious, unfortunately. Exactly. But in most cases, a lot of the um, the inner demon stuff are created through our own struggles and suffering and addictions and stuff like that. So it's like sometimes we create demons only to torture ourselves. And sometimes our demons get so big, or they go out torturing other people. You know what I mean? And so they say that almost every single entity that exists was created through the mind of some way that's living and breathing and has a, is a soul from source. So, but this is also one of the reasons why we've been basically kept in this artificial quarantine for so long here on earth. Um, they talk about the Van Allen belts and how we're not able to really leave the planet very easily. And that is actually why, because they don't want us manifesting these entities and um, thought forms, etc., on other planets. So they're kind of keeping us here until we have learned how to control our thoughts and our vibrations, which is not an easy thing to do. I mean, we're, we're slowly learning it with the shift, but it's, uh, it's very difficult to be able to control your emotions when you are dealing with some sort of an attachment because they are going to make all of your emotional triggers even worse. So, and this is going to affect your dream state as well. So most people that are dealing with an attachment, that's when the attachment likes to mess with them the most. It doesn't matter whether it's a collective unconscious one or, or a self-created one, but a lot of them mess with us while we sleep because that is when we've let our guard down the most. And quite a divine. I have, I have a question for the chat. How many, like, how many of you suppress emotions? How many of you just put the emotions to the side or throw them on the bookshelf and like, I'll deal with it later and you don't deal with it? Did you know by suppressing the emotions and not releasing them, that is turning in, into an attachment? The attachment turns into the obsession. So what if I told you that your power is releasing the emotions? How Would you release it all the time? I, I mean, every so time you... you releasing emotion, like playing a song and crying it out? Crying is, and that, and that, that's, that's the crazy thing about crying. We were all taught growing up, like, yeah, it makes you weak and you can't cry. And it's so, you know, it's so embarrassing. But here's the thing. It's the opposite. Crying makes us free. Crying is a release. Even laughing is a release. Mm -hmm. I can't even tell you how many times I've gone into a laughing fit, just releasing. It releases so much, but then it also raises your vibration a lot higher. And Laughter even, is really important. Even if you can't get like a crying or laughing out, I encourage you to, you know, go to the gym and work it out. Cause you know how many times I've gone to the gym and like just started bawling for no reason. <laughs> I'm yeah. You know, going yeah. out in nature and just, and just letting it out. 100%. Yeah, it's very true. And uh, I really do feel like music is one of the best things you can do, but even just sitting in your thoughts just feeling your emotions and asking yourself, okay, why do I feel this way about this? Yes. And sitting with yourself is a really healing way of actually shedding those emotions. But it's funny because every single time I do a clearing on somebody and I ask the soul guides, are there any trapped emotions that we can release within the physical or emotional body? Always is their answer. Always. There's always something. And yesterday there was a young woman that I did a clearing on and I asked, can we release all the emotions? And they said, we're going to have to do this very delicately over the next two weeks because she has so much um, built up emotion. It's like a pressure cooker. You know what I mean? Where you have to let the steam off very, very carefully because if you try and open it all at once, you're just going to, you know, so the soul guides are basically like, yeah, we are going to continue to do this very, very, very carefully over the next two weeks. She's going to feel emotional. She's probably going to start crying and not know why. This is why. She's quite literally turned herself into a pressure cooker with emotions. But that's why you end up going from like having a fuse a mile long to having like no fuse to where you're your triggers are setting you off left and right. And that's why, because you have filled your emotional capacity. A lot of people do that and not even realize they're doing it. Yep. Big time. Any questions that you guys may have about that? 
I've noticed uh, held on emotions makes the body unhealthy over time. So releasing the emotion is much better for our mind and body. Yes, exactly. That is so that is so true. So true. I've I can't even tell you how many times I've manifested illness because I've held on to emotions. Yeah, same. I feel music is my biggest thing too, Daniel. I'm listening to music all day long. And whenever I I'm in a mood, I tend to listen to the mood music. Like if I'm feeling a bit I don't know, melancholy or something. I'll listen to music that, but that's, it doesn't, I don't know. I, for a while I thought, well, you're just keeping yourself in that, in that mood. If you're sad and you listen to sad music, you're just going to keep yourself sad. So I would try and do the opposite where I'd listen to happy music, but then I would end up just burying that emotion rather than really feeling it out. So now I, you know what I mean? I, I try and sit in that emotion for a while. And uh, I really do feel that that is the best way of trying to heal those emotions rather than trying to suppress them or cancel them out with an opposite emotion. I like to put on very sad movies to make me cry, <laughs> force a cry out. That's a good one. Yeah. Sad movies. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. And uh, I'll see. Lisa says, <laughs> how can we use edibles for shadow work? That's a really good question, Lisa. In fact, uh, one of my favorite ways to release emotions is uh, with mushrooms. <laughs> That's a good way of doing it because if you think about it, a lot of your emotions that you don't even realize you have come out while you're ex having that experience. A lot of people laugh their butts off for that reason because, you know, they're also bringing their vibration up. But for me, like one of the things I've noticed that whenever I, I partake, is that a lot of um, emotions that I wasn't even aware of come to the surface first. And so I end up feeling like, I don't know, sometimes sad, but most of the time I just feel a lot better afterwards because it's like a, a whole chain of emotions that tend to come out. I'm just reading. Oh, Kale is here. Hi, Kale. Music has a way of creating a cathartic release in whatever may be for us to expound on our feelings and to allow us to go through us entirely. We as humans, myself included, are awful about allowing ourselves to find a healthy way to regulate emotions since society is made dealing with our emotions a very repressive learning curve. Beautifully said, Kale. Absolutely oh, true. Jessica, I'm so with you. Disney movies. I'm always, I'm always watching Disney movies to just feel peace. I love breaking out old school movies like Lion King, Little Mermaid. Oof. <laughs> well, you're visiting your inner child that way. And it's, it is an emotional release, I think. Quite a lot of the, uh, the stuff from our inner childhood comes out when we do that. Yeah. I took some high-powered cannabis oil last night, and it completely brought my guard down, and I had a great release. That's good, Patrick. Gotta love it. Fern Gully is such a wow, great that movie. is old school. Oh wow. I think I saw I think it's on I think it's on that um free TV or free app Tubi. If you heard of it, that Fern Gully is on there. I, I could have sworn I saw it on there. Damn. Anybody else art is a good way of releasing emotions. Any form of art, whether or not you're just creating candles, it doesn't matter. You can create all kinds of cool stuff through your uh, artistic expression that will also help with your emotions. Um, I got to tell you guys, um, I, I was practicing um, creating a dance where you set the intention that I'm releasing as you move. I have a couple of videos like that on TikTok where people are like, whoa, that works. I'm like, yeah, because you set that intention as you move, it, it releases from you. Love it. Who said Labyrinth? I love Labyrinth. Gotta love Bowie. Absolutely. Love it. What other movies help you guys emotionally release? Because this is what happens. If we don't release these things, they come out in our dreams. So it is very important to try and identify what these things are. Um, if you're having dreams that make you uncomfortable. So this is kind of like your, your detective work that you've got to do for your shadow. Uh, I released some emotion yesterday at an interview and it felt like rebirthing myself and pushed through every emotion. Well done. Very nice. Laura, why do they say not to use your phone for the first hour you wake up? 
Um, well, because, you know, Nim is the first person that comes to mind when I think of this. And Nim is uh, one of the soul guides that we work with. Um, and he said that one of the best things that you can do, because one of the clients that we did a clearing on last week got this as his advice. Um, and Nim suggested that you spend an hour every morning um, with a morning routine, whether it is uh, meditating. Uh, you just you're, It's important to have a normal routine anyway, to get up, brush your teeth, make your bed, clean up any clutter, clean your dishes from the night before. All of that is important for clearing out energy that's going to be affecting you during the day. So getting all of that into a, you know, is really important. But then it's also the time of day when you're, you just came out of the, the theta brainwave state as well. So you're still kind of like floating around in that mental state quite a bit. So one of the things that you can do in the morning when you first wake up is to meditate. Um, and a lot of times I've also told this in my astral projection class, but when you wake up in the morning is one of the best times to actually practice your astral projection. Because a lot of people do it the opposite. They think, well, if I practice astral projection at night before I go to bed, then I can practice, you know, then I'll be out of body all night and I can have fun and blah, blah, blah. But it's actually very hard to do that when you're when you're tired. So a lot of times what you can do, the best thing that you can practice at is actually in the mornings when your mind is still in that theta brainwave state. So it gets you out of body easier. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. Legend is a good one too, but it's not just movies. There's lots of different ways to just get our emotions out, whether it's spending time um, out in nature really helps because you know, you're channeling that nature energy. I imagine you uh, as a shaman understand that. So I like to go outside when it's raining and dance in the rain. <laughs> That's a beautiful way of healing and also just washing energy away from you that you don't want. Good suggestion. Uh, journaling. Yes, that's a good one. Jessica says, I try to use five to 10 minutes to try and recall all the dreams and even type them out of my phone. Yes. Having a journal and just awesome. writing down your dreams in the morning in the first five, 10 minutes is a really big one because they're going to disappear throughout the day. Well, usually dreams start to disappear within minutes. Um. There's a lot of speculation as to why that happens. What do you think it is? Why why we remember our dreams when we wake up, but then we start to forget them. They, they start to disappear. I think that we didn't get the message and it's going to try again to deliver <laughs> it in another dream. <laughs> That's why we have those reoccurring dreams. We didn't get the message. Yeah. Something triggered me yesterday and I released two years of grief losing my identical twin sister. I hadn't realized how much I've been holding in. I'm so sorry to hear about your sister, Joyce. I can only imagine. But, you know, this is one of the best things about dreaming is that you can actually visit with our loved ones. You can call them to you and set the intention that you'll visit with them at night. And so you'll have a little visit in the spirit world, which is really beautiful. So whenever you have a loved one that comes in and... and pops in in a dream. That was a real visit. Um, Laura, do you mind if I um, ask Joyce a question? Because I, I don't know why I feel no. called to ask her um, a little preview of the music message, if she's still in here. Is Joyce still in oh. here? Yeah, I imagine she is. Um, if you're okay with it, um, I don't know why, but I was reading your message and I felt called to um, talk to you about a um, song that I was getting while I was reading your message. They told me to say it was from your twin, and it's the song Hold On by Wilson Phillips. Oh, that's beautiful. This is one of the cool things that, that Joanne is really good at is uh, whenever a loved one is, is just kind of poking in to say hi, she's got a, a, a song that pops into mind that is a message. And so a lot of times, the one that you did for me was perfect, by the way. <laughs> I had to sit with that for a couple days and I'm like, wait, really? She really has somebody coming in through like that? Okay. And I, I had to like make sure and I checked and checked. I sat with it for a while and I'm like, okay, we're talking about it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's wonderful to hear a song and to know that it was sent by a loved one. 
Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad that um, you liked it. And um, I'll do a lot more previews um, if you guys are interested. Um, I'll do a lot more previews like that. Um, Who is the the, uh, the artist? It is Wilson Phillips. Wilson, Wilson Phillips. Phillips. Hold on. It's back from the, I think it's 1990. It's from 1990. Nice. My brother always communicates through songs. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, see, this is what a lot of, because we do get messages all day long from our loved ones. You're welcome. A lot of times we're not paying attention. It could be something as silly as having, you know, uh, a number 333 pop up or 1111 or seeing 444 on a license plate or hearing a song that comes on that gives you goosebumps. I walked into the store the other day. Um, and the safety dance came on. <laughs> Are you ever hear the safety dance? You know that song. That song. <laughs> that song's back in the day. Literally, as soon as I walked into the grocery store, the safety dance came on, and I laughed my butt off because that's one of my main songs for my guides. Whenever um, I, I, whenever I hear that song, I just know they're trying to get my attention. And the fact that it came on the minute I walked into the store, I started dancing around the soul store, like singing the safety dance song. <laughs> Uh, love it but that's what they do they they know that we're paying attention and so when something like this pops up and it's like so obvious you have to just embrace it because i mean that's what they want you to do <laughs> karen says i am her morning routine love you karen <laughs> oh so funny any insight of being able to feel and taste in dreams, just experiencing the senses in general? I well, think that's, you know, when I, what I ask um, when I do a um, dream interpretation is I ask, like, how did that make you feel? Like, I'm very specific with the questions. Like, how did that make you feel? What exactly were you doing? What were you looking at? What were you eating? So, yeah, we would definitely um, go, go into that in detail. Well, a lot of, you know, one of the things that's such a misconception about the astral is that it's not real. And that, you know, if you're getting a visit, that, that that's not real. That if you're seeing something, that it's not real. All dreams are real. That's actually one of Carl Jung's first rules of understanding dream interpretation is that all dreams are real. That everything you experience while you're dreaming is real. So when you are a deceased person, one of the cool things about being deceased is that if you want to eat chocolate cake, for just a random example, all you have to do is say, Bing, chocolate cake. Oh, cool. And you can eat it. You actually create a chocolate cake that if you go and take a bite of it in the astral, you will smell it, you will taste it. So... You know, it is one of those things where a lot of times we think that things in the astral are not real. And so just because we can't physically touch it. But if you're in the astral, you can physically touch it. And so, yeah, you can you can do everything in the astral that you can do in the physical and vice versa. And you do get some dreams that are very random and weird. And I think that's when your brain is kind of like on autopilot. Because you do get a lot of, because your dreams are like a, a soup of mixed emotions and memories and feelings and just a whole lot of stuff all just kind of mixed together in some confusing way. Um, <clears throat> I had yeah, a dream. You, <laughs> sorry, I was going to tell you, would you say um, that the dreams are our reality and this is the dream? I've heard them people say that before. What do you think of that? I think we're playing a video game right now. I think that this is a game that people play in the astral. I don't think we ever leave the astral, that we are basically just projecting our consciousness into a simulation that is um, here to teach us about limitations. So it's kind of like we are, we're in a school right now and we've sent our consciousness to an avatar that is inside an etheric school if you think about it so yeah everything is real um, but everything is energy and even though you can feel something is real it doesn't mean it's real it's still just a thought it's still intention it's still just energy 
So all, none of this is technically real if you want to think about it, because, you know, when you when you die, you essentially wake up from the illusion of this reality. So a lot of people actually believe that you're more real, more alive on the other side because you're more aware of everything and you have more abilities because you're not limited by the 3D experience. So, yeah, <laughs> it's just a game, as Dolores would say. Yeah, they don't have duality um, on the other side. So that's that's definitely different. Well, because on the other side, you end up realizing that everybody is everybody, that we're all just the same consciousness um, that has been split to the, you know, so several degree, if not more. It is a big game changer, though, when you realize that you are in a simulation, because that's when things start making more sense. Things like deja vu and your dreams and all of those weird stuff that tends to happen here in the physical that makes a lot more sense when you know that the astral is just as real as, as the physical. And this is also why you get beings that are so powerful that they can actually, even as an entity, as a thought form, they can still manifest themselves physically sometimes just through the power of intention and belief. So there are beings out there that are quite formidable that are created through belief just by humans setting their belief and intentions and who are going off and doing their own thing. And it's kind of like I said, like Frankenstein's monster where they they're set to purpose, but they're also just kind of doing whatever they feel like doing. So it's a very unique and interesting game we're playing with ourselves if you think about it especially here I, on earth i learned a lot of game changers and i think the more that you embrace your awakening it gets really exciting when you start learning the game changers this game has cheat codes <laughs> yep the cheat codes yes <laughs> yeah. i started learning cheat codes and that's when i started getting fun the law of attraction really is one of the biggest cheat codes you can have which one was that Law of attraction. Oh yeah. I can't even tell you how many things I think I think I told you how I manifested um being in my um um idols video music video. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead, you can tell that story. Oh I can. So um <laughs> um I manifested to be in a famous singer's music video. I, I've loved him since I was um you can say the name. This is a safe Base. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, so I'm a huge <laughs> I'm, Nick Carter. <laughs> I'm a huge Backstreet Boys fan. Nick Carter was my favorite, and um, and I did this with my sh shamanism, by the way, how I manifested nice. it, because um, we have a board and we we use it as like a like an energy and everything. So as I was releasing something that didn't serve me, that came into creation. Like literally, I was not expecting that. I, I manifested myself in his music video. And not only did I manifest it, oh, Jessica, we just became besties. <laughs> um, we just became besties. Um, and I manifested not only being in his video, but I manifested being in his video the first person. So that really meant a lot to me. She's on a first name basis. If she, if she runs into Nick, he's like, do it. <laughs> I mean, I have seen him. I mean, I do have a tattoo of him, his signature on my arm. I mean, I've seen him so many times. My, my, my house is covered in. Okay, now now I'm besties with Aaron. <laughs> See, we're embracing our inner teenagers here. So what video? Um, it is um made for us. He it came out October 31st of last year. <laughs> you guys want to see it? I'm the first one. I'm like 20 seconds in. Nice. So, yes. Power of attraction, see? You yes. Gotta your intention. You got to let go of stuff doesn't serve you for it's for the stuff to come in that does serve you. That's how it works. Yep. And the universe doesn't really understand don't either, you know. You say I don't want this you end up getting it because it doesn't understand the word don't. So it's like saying, well, I don't want any pasta for dinner. Well, guess what you're going to have? You're going to get pasta because you're talking about it. So <laughs> the more you talk about something, the more you end up attracting it. So it's very important to, uh, to set your goals properly. There was a, um, I'm going to Georgia um, 
in June to, I don't know if anybody's um, any vampire diaries fans in here. I love them. I love series about mystics and witches and werewolves and vampires. I love that stuff. It's just so entertaining. And I bought tickets and I was like, my favorite on there is Klaus. I don't know if anybody watches that series, but um, he's really popular, but he's a really bad, bad hybrid vampire um, what werewolf. And so um, I was like, there's no, I was like, he's got to be there. He's got to be there. I'm not going unless he's going to be there. A week later, they announced he was going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Somebody else it. told me, oh, some, yes, Originals. Originals is my favorite. Originals is my absolute favorite. And somebody else told me Supernatural was one I need to watch. I think I need to put that on my watch. I told you you're in a safe space around here. You know, we get we get all the kinds. I'm always talking about how much I love D&D and stuff. Like, <laughs> like uh, we're, we're allowed to be as nerdy as we want around here. I, I, okay, so, so I got to test this real quick. How many, how many Klaus fans? Klaus and Elijah and, and Cole, the, the original. How many? How many? I love Supernatural. And True Blood. True Blood was also really good. Until it got weird at the end. I love how they mixed in with the fairies and all that stuff. All of this is real, for the record. Like, <laughs> all yes, of this is why we have such a, you know, uh, an attraction to these sort of topics and, and stories is because so many of us have or know that they're real to a degree, that we have these supernatural things that happen around us all the time. <laughs> so, okay. So now we're, now we're gotten the subject of Elijah. I've been having some spicy dreams about Elijah lately. Like what's up with that? I know that man's in a I, suit and everything, but that's a good dream to interpret. What if you have a sex dream? What's that all about? Uh, and you're acting out. You're to me, out I can only I can only interpret it for myself, and I would say that I have some work to do because I have some uncomfortable. It's an uncomfortable for me to any sexual conversations. It's an, so that's what it would be for me. But if somebody else was having recurring, um, I'd have to know more details. Depends on whether like like cheating dreams are often when you are yeah. like, coming out of subconscious fear of, of that happening. Um, but a lot of times, I did wonder this, actually. Somebody asked this during one of my astral projection classes, and it was such a good question. They had said, what if you're having a dream with, let's say, I don't know, Brad Pitt, right? And it's a sex dream. Does that mean that you are energetically tapping into Brad Pitt and like molesting him in his sleep <laughs> or or are you creating your own thought form of Brad Pitt where you are you know creating this thought form to go and have fun with so it makes you wonder like what is it is Brad Pitt like being astral molested by tens of thousands of women every night <laughs> Or is he actually creating tens of thousands of Brad Pitts in the astral? Like, yeah. how does that work? I mean, I feel like he's just the popular one up there. You know, um, everyone loves his energy up there. I mean, I've noticed oh. a couple of people trying to play with my energy. I'm like, whoa, whoa. Uh, what, what's up with that? <laughs> That's something I couldn't answer the question because I don't know. I imagine that we're creating our own version of Brad Pitt in our dreams. We're creating, a, you know what I mean, a Brad Pitt, or I should say, in in Jason Momoa, in Jessica's uh, <laughs> example. So it makes you wonder, like, are you actually creating your own version for these or in the astral? And what happens to that version when you wake up? Is the astral just filled with a bunch of horny Brad Pitts running around? Like, <laughs> we just kind of pluck one, like. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious this myself. I've never asked that question to a soul guide, so I don't know. I guess I'll have to. We are going to have our Chen Uncensored talk on Tuesday. Maybe I'll sneak that question in. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, I really feel like, um, I, I mean, some people are just a lot of fun energy. Like, I just, you know, bringing back Nick Carter, I mean, that man, I, I'm in his energy, and I glow up, and I light up, and I'm like, Nobody can tell me that he ain't a, a soul family of some sort because I have this, you know, vibe with him that I've and I and I waited all this time to meet him. I only met him back in 2018. And it's like, wow, 
but sometimes you have that with people and maybe maybe um you can catch that vibe with Brad Pitt, like watching his bit, like movies or something. And then you create that vibe and then you have those dreams. That's the thing. You never know what, what version <laughs> you're going to get when you're tapping into that energy. Jessica, you funny. That's <laughs> funny. That's funny. That's <laughs> I'm driving around in an apple <laughs> coat bus waiting for bedtime to make their stops. <laughs> 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 oh, it's so funny but you never know this, this this is one of the things because humans we create so many things with our minds that we don't even realize what we're creating and uh and this is one of the cool things i've noticed when i'm doing clearings on people is i've found quite a few people that are astral projecting and don't even realize that that when they dream, they think they're dreaming, but they're not. They're actually astral projecting. Because I've checked a few times where I'm finding portals. And I'm like, okay, where did this portal open? And they're like, oh, she opened that. She she did that herself when she astral traveled last night. And then she didn't close it when she came back in the morning. And I was like, damn. So you're leaving gateways open. You don't even realize it. And that happens almost every time somebody astral travels. Because when you come back into your body, you don't realize that you just opened a portal and you've left it open. I uh, travel back to um, the home that I remember back in New York with my family. Do you do that? You ever travel back to New York to the fa your family home? Yeah, quite a lot. Yeah, I do that a lot, and it's like I wonder if that's like a really happy space, happy memory that you remember. That's why we travel back to. Yeah, exactly. Elizabeth wants to know how we're captions are coming up, even though we're live, because there is a few second delay. Of about maybe five to ten seconds that, that causes a lot of issues when we're having um, internet problems as well. Which you may have noticed uh, a couple of days ago when we were having issues trying to chat. <laughs> and we kept losing Minty, that's why. <laughs> so yeah, anybody have any questions about dreams or anything real quick? I figure we keep it to about an hour so I can, I got my little man out there waiting very patiently for his chicken and waffles that we do every weekend. That's so uh, let, let's talk a little bit about your dream messages though. Your, your dream messages, your, your music messages, because you do those for people. Yeah. And you have a page that you've set up for this. So um, my page, if you guys are interested in um, Midnight Sun Goddess is um, where I will start going live. If you guys are interested in getting a preview, like the, I don't know if she's still in here. Like the preview I just gave um, earlier, um, I can do live preview music messages. And then if anybody's interested in working with me outside of that, um, I have like a, um, like the music mix and then I put it in a video and then it, and then it creates a whole video I could send you on Facebook. Oh, there you go. Thank you. There you go. Give her a follow, you guys. Check out Midnight Sun Goddess. And she's got a lot of really cool posts. And you can ask her for, you know, questions about dream interpretation or from video messages from spirit. Because those are really, I mean, yours was spot on. It was it was really beautiful and uh, and very emotional. She made me cry, you guys. Like I was <laughs> crying when I was putting it together. Released immediately upon seeing your message. <laughs> And then, like, if if you want, I could start, um, you know, going on the pages too. If you guys want to follow, find me in there, and I can do previews of the music messages too. That would be lovely. Wonderful. Yeah, you feel free to do them on uh, Soul Apprentice as well, you know, because uh, or share them from Midnight Sun Goddess onto there to grow it a bit faster. Because I think a lot of people would love to see these beautiful messages and. Um, we're looking for messages from spirit all the time. So it's nice to have a medium that can tune in and hear a song, you know what I mean? And get that song for us. I actually had someone tell me the other day, they're like, Jojo, you're going to be the music medium. And I'm like, that's it. That's it. I'm the music medium. So <laughs> Love it's that. Stuck. the music medium. Uh, Joy says, I dreamt of a mirror last night, but I couldn't see myself properly. So I kept peeling off like a film of layer upon layer, but still couldn't see myself. That's a, that's a deep message right there. Yeah. Want to take I, I, that one? Yeah, I, I, I can do that. Um, so it sounds like you have a case of mistaken identity. 
And it seems like it's coming in the dream because you're trying to find your real self. And that's why you're peeling off. Are you like having or working through trying to find who you really are? Because that's what I got from that is like, you know, she's peeling off, peeling off layers. She's trying to find out who she really is. All we can really do is just use our intuition to decipher these messages because each one may have a different mess meaning for a different person, considering we all have different histories and experiences. So I love that you just intuitively come up with your own take on it. And, uh, and I feel that that is actually probably going to be very accurate considering that you're actually getting these downloads for people. Um, would love your take on dreaming of a recent past loved one crying at the bottom of a swimming pool in the corner. So do you hold responsibility or blame yourself for not saying something to them? Or maybe you wish you could have done something to help them with their past. I mean, you know, could have helped them from not dying. That's what I was picking up on. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of us, sometimes we, uh, there's something we wish we could say. But remember, guys, that, that all you have to do is call, all you have to do is call that person and you can talk to them. You can tell them everything. You know, even if this person is long gone, you can still call that energy to you and tell them everything that you wish that you could have said before. And they will hear you. Um, if you want to be answered back, you have to be more, you know, you have to ask for a reply. And a lot of times they will give you validation through um, feathers, butterflies, songs, you know, there's so many different things. Each one is different and unique. And really, it's just down to the important meaning that you put on those things. So that's one of the reasons, like, for example, if you really love rainbows, they'll show you rainbows because they know you love them. So if there's something that gives you goosebumps or catches your attention, that's probably a message. A lot of times people ask me, well, what can I do to, um, you know, talk to the dece my deceased loved one? I always tell them the astral plane is the safest because a lot of people, you know, if they see spirit, they, their first reaction is fear, fear, fear. And that's going to not, it's not going to work. You need to, you know, right before bed, you would need to set the intention, make sure you're, you know, in a meditation and then let it go and then fall asleep. That's what I tell people when they ask, how do I dream about a certain deceased person? It's hard to have those dreams, too, because we miss them so much. But uh, that's the best ways to visit. Yeah, I was in the astral. So that way you can have an actual conversation together. So if you ever see somebody in the astral that you love, that that is a real person that you're visiting with. It's not something that you created in your own mind. Um, although it is possible that you can, this is the thing about the human mind. It's so powerful that we can actually create sometimes these things too. So it's, it's down to your discernment, listen to your intuition, meditate on it, and you should get your answer from your guides and, and from your loved ones on the other side. So, yeah, thank you, Joanne. This has been a wonderful conversation. Yeah. Good to see you. I would love to come back sometime. Absolutely. And we should actually, you know, do like more um, talks about the music and, and, and messages from spirit, because I feel that is something we could talk about all day long, actually. <laughs> I'll, I'll start going um if you guys are interested i'll start going live more and um i'll do more dream and music messages if you guys are interested perfect that would be wonderful you're gonna do that from the midnight sun goddess yeah yeah and then I'll, oh. I'll i'll share it on um soul apprentice so you guys can come find me wonderful well thank you again for coming and thank you very much guys i'm gonna keep it to an hour today so i can give my little man some attention well he's uh it's a rainy day i don't know about you guys but the weather has not been very good so we're gonna try and find something indoors to do today <laughs> so i uh i just love you guys to bits and it's wonderful to have you guys join me today on a saturday thank you very much thank um, you guys so much i'm gonna check really quick Make sure there isn't something I'm supposed to be promoting for divinate. Christopher is always doing his Qigong on the weekend. So make sure that you don't miss that because Christopher's Qigong class is amazing. And Daniela also does her um, Sacred Sundays, which is basically um, 
healing exercises. There's a lot of really important healing that we're supposed to be doing, you guys. A lot of shadow work. So make sure that you don't miss those opportunities. And um, and I'll see the rest of you guys on Monday. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Mwah, love you, guys. everyone. Have a good day. See you soon, guys. Love you all. Bye.